go ahead and take a look here at this capacitor and see if this compressor is running. It's a 230 volt compressor and we're unaware, I haven't looked up online yet to see what the size capacitor is going to be. So we're going to start off with what I think most of these two ton units use about a 30, 35, maybe a 40 microfarad cap. So we're going to start off with something I feel is about the size for this compressor and we're going to set the meter on microfarads to make sure the cap between common and herm is good. Now this is a dual cap where it has both the capacitor for the hermetic compressor, which is the Herm, and it also has it for the fan, which is probably a five microfarad. Could be a three, four, seven and a half, but this one's a 35.5, and it's about 34.8 microfarads. So why do we need the cap? Uh, the capacitor is for single phase systems, because it needs, the motor needs 220 volt circuits to keep the magnet from north and south locking up and staying seized up. So the second 120 volt circuit energizes another winding, which is usually a bigger winding called the start winding, to get that motor to torque, to spin, to get it what it needs. Because it's working against pressure on the high side. It's got some refrigerant in the low side that it's gonna start drawing in on. And uh, this is what gets it spinning. So if uh, usually the compressors go bad or seem like they go bad, like they're not working, this is the first part I tell people to check because Normally you can see if they're bad, they'll be bubbled up on the top and uh, look pregnant, they call it. They call that a pregnant capacitor. So before I connect up the capacitor circuit, which is here and here, I'm going to go ahead and show you what locked rotor amps. And there's a nameplate on the side that tells me this compressor locked up under load. Oh, there's the cap, 40. Um, and there we got uh, the load lock rotor amps is going to be 67. Now this cap size could be plus or minus 5%. So 35 is really close. Uh, with about 5% of that. So we're going to go ahead and try it anyway, but the cap could blow. It's not the, uh, it's not the correct size. So we're going to go ahead and set this on AC amps, 20. I'm going to clip it around this wire here, all right? And then we're going to go ahead and plug it in. And this won't, this won't work until I get this other winding, that start winding energized. So we'll plug it into the circuit. And then we got Ronnie back there. Ronnie, go ahead and hit the breaker. It tripped right away. All right, tripped right away. Not, a, not enough, nothing, nothing's gonna be spinning on that one there. So uh, it tripped right away. There is no chance of that running. We're also gonna go ahead, Ronnie, you got that off? Is it off? All right, we're good. You can come back over here for a second. We're gonna go ahead and measure the windings across Common Start 1 to make sure that all the windings are, are good after that little experiment because it could have heated up the windings. And then also, these compressors have pressurized nitrogen in them. Uh, from when we took them out of the units. So we're gonna go ahead and see if uh, maybe it's seized up even because it's been sitting with the nitrogen for a few years. So we're gonna set this to ohms. And actually, let's go ahead and set it to ohms. Ohms continuity is not gonna be good enough. And we got 1.1 between start and common. And then we got 0.7 between common and run. So it should be 1.9 or 2-ish. Um, no, it's only 1.2. So we might have a shorted winding inside. This one here might have a shorted winding inside this compressor. So it should add up, two of them should add up to one. So between start, which is the yellow, and run, which is the red, that should add up. And then that's a low resistance, 0.8 and 1.1. Um, really, as long as you get one number, that's good. But between common and run, that is... 0.6, wait a minute, we might have it. And between common and start is one. Do we have 1.6? Do we have 1.6 between red and, red and yellow? No, we don't, we got 1.1. I think we got shorted windings on this compressor. I think this compressor is bad. So I don't think this capacitor is even gonna work with this one here, because we got a bad compressor. So let's go over here to this unit and see if we can see what's going on with um, this one here is uh, same type of thing. Let's test this one out real quick. Let's bring this one over here. Looks similar. I think this one's a heat pump. This one's a straight cool. It's 410A use only. This one was R22, so it's a little different on the on the types, but they almost look identical. They're both scroll compressors. So let's again, let's see if two of them add up to one. So we got this one here and this one here, which is common and run usually. And that's 1.4. And then we got common start, 
should be more, 2.0. So between common and run, a start and run, it should be 3.4-ish. 3.12, pretty close, that's it. So this is a good compressor, that's a bad compressor. And that's how you ohm out a compressor, well, not only to find a common start run, but to find out if the windings are shorted out. So we got one more compressor, it's 120 volts. Come on over here, take a look. You're gonna need your goggles on Ronnie for this part. So this came out of a unit, and I used this in a couple other videos, but uh, right here, with it not plugged in, if I measure between common and, common's gonna be white, and my run is gonna be, that's 5.6, and then common to start is 18, so that's a big winding, yeah, 18. 18 and five should be what? What's the quick math on 18 and five? 18 and five. 18 and 5, come on. 20. Oh. No. 18 and 5. This is our high school education math at work <laughs> here, ladies and gentlemen. 23. 23. 23. That's right. 23. <laughs> simple numbers, simple math. And that's usually what messes people up is the simple math. All right, so yeah, we got 23. So now when I try and start this compressor, you're going to have that lock rotor amps, which might sometimes be posted on the side of the compressor. But this one here, we're going to need that power cord that's back there, Randy. We're going to turn this one on, watch the lock rotor amps, and this is what the start capacitor is supposed to do. It's supposed to energize that other winding to let the motor start, and then once it starts, it's supposed to take away the power. It's supposed to break away from the power source and not, not stay energized in the circuit. So right now, oh, we don't have the switch on. Check the breaker. Pause. Pause. 